It's tough, man. Yeah, I was fighting some men. Bible says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men to hold the truth and unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them for the invisible things of him. For the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You know what that means? That means the creation, the entire creation. Yes, this is not a create, this is a creation. Not something that's evolved or going to do or going to do. Whatever that funny stuff believes. I don't even know the info on that. The knowledge of the Creator and His power and Godhead and His judgment. You know it. And you know it well. Whether you say you're an atheist or not, or you don't believe in God, or Maybe you believe in a different God. You know his power and his judgment. You know he's real. You know there's a creator to this world. Yeah. There's a, somebody built that McDonald's over there, right? You don't have a hard time saying somebody made that McDonald's. But you have a hard time saying that, you know, an organism that has, you know, millions and millions and millions of pieces to it, right, a human body, cells, like, so complex, you can't even, you, no, you can't say that God made that for some reason, you can't, you can't, you can't believe that somebody created that for some reason, you can't accept that, you know why, because man can't fathom the creator, why, because man can't create things, you know, it's a mix of pride and all these things, it's a mix of jealousy of God, uh, it's the fact that they don't want to accept that he's righteous and that they're not. They don't want to accept that. No, nobody wants to accept the fact that they're wrong. The Bible says you know these things clearly. It says the creation knows the invisible things of him. They're clearly seen by the creation. It says because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. But became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Preparing themselves to be wise, they became fools. So it happened. Once they knew God at one point, but guess what? No. They wanted to darken their foolish heart. They said, no, I'm going to do that wrong thing. They darkened their foolish heart. They became vain in their imaginations. Professing themselves to be wise. So now I know better. Or, no, I've got this, God. Or now, you know, let me do my thing. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. What does the fool say? The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Yeah, you are a fool if you say there's no God. It's clearly, it's evident. The fool, the wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all of his thoughts. That's what the fool says. As a dog returning to his vomit, so the fool returneth to his folly. That's man. You're like, oh, I'm trying to do all these good things, I'm trying to do good things, I'm trying to do good deeds. 
but you can't. Over and over and over, we go back to doing wrong things. I wonder why. You're a slave to these things. You're in bondage. You can't get away from it. But the Bible says that in whom we have redemption through his blood, talking about Christ, even the forgiveness of sins who is in the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. There's redemption in Christ. You can pay that price, right? You're sold under slavery to sin. Christ to buy you back. You can become his purchased possession. There's liberty in Christ. It's your choice. The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You can live your life a sinful life, not want to trust in God. Or you can just trust in God. For his righteousness. Why his righteousness? We have none. We can't be perfect things. All righteousness is nothing but filthy rags, as the Bible says. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man so that shall he also be. What did you do? Like that thing people call karma, right? They give them the name karma because they, they think it's just like this thing that happens. It's not karma. It's called God. God is not mocked. He's going to pay you back for what you do. It's called reaping what you sow. You have two choices, right? It's your choice, what you do, you're going to pay the recompense for the outcome. You can, number one, turn to God. The Bible says you should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven, the earth, and the sea, and all the things that are therein. Who in time past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. You turn from these vanities unto the living God. What is your life? Your life is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Yeah, no time running service. It goes, comes and goes. You're born and you die. It happens so fast. Ask anybody who's up in age at all. They said, no, it was, it's like it was just yesterday. I was like 20 just yesterday. Right? I was 30 yesterday. It goes by so fast. Some people die young. Some people die of old age. You don't know when death is coming. Will you turn from these vanities into the living God at death? What has all the things you've done in this world? What is all what do all these things gain you? What have they gained you at death? Has your fancy car given you something that I don't know about at death? Has your, you know, tablet, you know, has any of these things given you assurance at death? Do you have assurance at death? Are you afraid of death? Do you know what happens even? The rich man dies just like the poor man. We're not worried about, we're not talking about possessions here on earth, or honor things, things you see, or not invisible things, eternal things. What's that? Your soul. You have a soul, a body, and a spirit. Are you worried about where your soul is going after that? It's just like you. You are a soul with a body. You know that. You're not a body with a soul, you're a soul with a body. You're conscious, you're a soul. So what happens after death? As it is appointed as a man wants to die after this, the judgment. Every man after death will be judged. Of one of two things, according to the deeds that he's done in his body, or according to what Christ did. That how am I judge? If you judge according to what you've done, we're going to be sentenced to damnation is what you're going to be doing. Why? Because we've done nothing but wrong. Man is unrighteous, filthy, right? Including me. I'm not a self-righteous preacher out here trying to tell you you're bad. No, I'm just preaching reality. We've all done wrong at some point. Right? He who's offended one point in the law is guilty of all. You go into a courtroom, you're not being condemned for what you haven't done. If you're a good person, right? If you have anybody who stole something, right? You want to try for theft. So now nah, this is a good guy. This record's clean. He's always just stole one thing. This goes that way in fast. He's clean. Let him go. No, no judge is going to say that. Let alone the holy and righteous God, who is going to be your judge, makes no error, never has, never will. No beginning, no end. Eternity to eternity. He's always been the holy and just God. Are you ready to be judged by him? If he was destroying you, you're no match. One wrong thing. You know what else the Bible says? The Bible says that without shedding of blood, there is no remission. Can't be remitted unless they're shedding blood. 
Right? For the wages of sin is death. Right? How do we have sin? Sin is in our members. We know that. Everybody sinned. Everybody knows we do wrong things. Where do we get it from? Adam. You know that, right? Adam sinned at the gate. Now we all have sin. We all do sin now. And we inherited that from Adam. So if we do one wrong thing, we're guilty. And God is entirely just by damning you. You know why? This is what the Bible says. But the fearful and unbelieving, the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have to take part in the lake of fire, which burns the lake, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. This is what's coming for you if you haven't trusted in Christ. We have no righteousness. You must realize this. The Bible says our life is hid with Christ in God. Our life is only in Christ. We have none. We're dead. Dead in our sins. Without Christ. Will you accept Christ? The only way out of that second death, the lake which burns with fire and brings some? We're here to preach the gospel of peace. Are you at peace with God? you judge? I'm sure I want to be. I'm pretty sure I want to be on good terms with the man who's going to judge me. Sentence me to my either eternal doom or eternal life. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance and increase this also. Vanity. Right back to that. Everything you do down here is vanity. It adds up to nothing in the end. That's that. Like I said, the rich man dies just like the poor man. You notice the richest man and the poorest man, neither are content. Neither the man in between. Why is that? You know, silver should not be satisfied with silver. The Bible says so, that's why. We're subject to vanity. Amen, God bless him. We're subject to vanity. Our heart is like a bottomless pit. And you know it. We're always trying to gain something, get something. Right? Do something. Take something. Eat something. Play something. Right? We're always trying to do something. Always do something. Can't just be satisfied. Why? God has put that hole in your heart. A bottomless pit that you can't fill. For five lifetimes. Million lifetimes. You cannot fill that hole in your heart. Why? There's only one man that can fill a bottomless pit. There's only one man that's eternal. From eternal to eternal. He's in all, through all, right? For all, he made all, Christ Jesus. He's the only one who can fill that hole in your heart. He's the only one who can satisfy. Not silver, not carnal things, but the invisible things which are eternal. Christ, your life. What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. The word is here. You're listening to it. Accept it. So what if I don't want it? Well, here you go. All flesh is have grass, and all the, all the glory of the man has flowers and grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falls away. See that? Man withers away. But the word of the Lord will go forever. And this is the word, the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Like the word of faith which we preach, you better accept it. You're going to be judged by it. It says in the day when God should judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. You be judged according by Jesus Christ and the Word. Right in the beginning was God. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The Word is God. Christ Jesus, the flesh, the Word, the same. You be judged by that. Right, there's that verse that says, I saw the small, the, I saw the dead, the small and great, and the book of life was open in the other books. Guess what? Those people were judged by those things. The books, the Bible. You're going to be judged by the Bible and Jesus Christ according to this gospel that we're preaching. The word of faith that we preach. So you need to accept it. So are you at peace or at enmity with God? The Bible says being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. What is faith? Faith is simply belief. What's that? I can have peace with God 
Who is believing what he says? Do you realize the, the severity of this? All you have to do is trust in Christ. And he's giving you a free ticket to heaven, peace with God, and not an enmity of him. The Bible says the carnal mind is that enmity with God. Right? It says the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. The wicked are prideful. They will not seek after God. They will not accept the fact that they're unrighteous. God is not in all his thoughts. You have a call of mind, you have enmity with God. If you're not justified by faith, you have enmity with God. But the Bible says being justified by faith, you have peace with God. All you have to do is put your faith in Christ. Not, don't believe on Jesus, believe in Jesus. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. You have peace with God. Yes, you'll be at peace with your eternal judge. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Yes, that is the truth. Blessed is the man whose sins are covered. Iniquities are forgiven. Why? If your iniquities are forgiven, you can. And all of it on your way there like a rocket. Any moment you can die. Me, I'm just waiting for death. I've got eternal security. I have assurance at death. I know where I'm going. Do you? That's the question. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus said that. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only one. He's the truth. He's the life. He's the only hope to get in heaven. The only hope at death. Jesus is the only hope. Not Mary, right? Not Buddha, not whatever anybody else believes. Not by good deeds. Right? Not by anything you wear. No. Faith in Christ. That's it. Faith in Christ. Trust in Christ Jesus. What he did. What he do? You God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. See that? He can pay your sin debt that he has. Right? You're a slave to sin. You can redeem you. can pay that sin debt through faith in his blood. What did Christ do? Maybe you don't know, and I'll tell you if you don't know what he did. Christ, God sent his son to the earth to become God manifest in the flesh. He was fully God and holy man. Some people say he was half God and half man. No. He was not, he was not a, what do you call those? He was not a demigod. No, he was God in the flesh. Man and God. He came down. God himself came down. Died on the cross for you. You realize that. God came down and died for you on the cross. What love. He humbled himself, being found, fashioned as a man. Right? He became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. That's what Christ did. He humbled himself, become a man, and died on the cross for you. Jesus is your only way out of damnation. Right? The fearful, unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, whoremongers, idolaters, sorcerers, and all liars God will pay part in the lake of birth with fire for itself. I'm here to preach you free and free from that. So you don't have to go through that. Redemption, that is in Christ Jesus. Right? Preach you reality. It's not, this isn't what I think, I, this is not what I think is true. I know this is true. All you have to do is put your trust in Christ. Right? Not a hand that work is not. But believe upon Jesus Christ. His faith is counted for righteousness. Your faith is counted for righteousness. What saved the scriptures? Abraham believed God. Guess what? It was counted to him for righteousness. It's not to him that worketh, but to him that believe. Righteousness is counted. If it was of works, then grace is no more grace. Why? Because for by grace are you saved through faith, and not not of yourself. It is a gift of God. Salvation is the gift of God, first of all. So what is that? What is a gift? If I give you a gift, are you supposed to pay me back? No, it's a gift. It's a free gift of eternal life right here I'm trying to give you. All you have to do is believe. It's a free gift. By grace are you saved through faith, not not of yourself. It is a gift of God. It's not of you, and you do, you do. And a man, you 
trust in besides Christ himself. No Buddha, no Muhammad, no Mary. Right now, they ain't doing nothing for you. Jack for the slot, all those guys are dead. What did Jesus do? Christ, who is declared to be the Son of God, when? When he was raised on the third day. Right? Not only did he die on the cross and pay your sin debt, he became Lord of all. He was set above all. His name, above every name, when he died. He raised again. And if Christ went to help you, he literally went to hell and back and then to heaven for you. He went through it, man. Are you going to trust in that? What Christ did for you? It's pretty good. All you have to do is believe. Not a word, so I say man can boast. Right? Why? It is. Free gift. You can't boast in that. A man gave it to you. If it was of works, if it was of works, none of us would be saved. None of us would be able to go to heaven if salvation came by works. Why? Because we've all at least done one wrong thing. Right? You walked into a courtroom, you've done one wrong thing. What happens? You're condemned. No one does you by what good you've done in your life, but judge you by that one bad thing that you're on trial for. Not the good that you've done in your life. I see this, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, and the case of man who holds the truth and unrighteousness. You see, you know the truth now, it's your job to accept it. Realize, God is not mocked. That which you show, you shall also reap. Your choice, there's a recompense for it. A lot of people like to call it karma. It's not karma, it's God. God paying you back for what you did. There's a recompense for everything you do. Which one will you choose? Death or life? Accept the free gift of eternal life and you will be saved. Right? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right? Be merciful and you all call upon him. You give grace to the lowly. This is a loving God revealing this. That's why I'm out here. God did not compel me to do this. If God did not save me himself, I would not be out here. I'd be stuck on my couch driving around in a car or something else like everybody else would be. Right? Going, fulfilling the vanity of my heart, kind of stuff full of just a bunch of junk with sin and unrighteousness. What could I be doing? But the love of Christ constrained us. It's not like I'm being forced to do this by his love. No. But yes, at the same time. You wouldn't understand it unless you had the love of Christ. It's like if a man, if somebody comes up and says, like, it was 17 degrees out here we were preaching. I think this, it was this winter. 17 degrees outside we were preaching. And this other gentleman, this guy came out and he gave us coffee. It was cold out. God bless that man. But just if somebody comes out and gives you something, right? For being a good person, even not even, not even being a Christian, something is a good person to you. Does that not encourage you to be a good person back? That's love, right? I'm right, I mean, it's just common sense, though. I ain't gonna explain that. It's more of an encouragement, but guess what? It's still more bound of life. It's such a great love. I mean, I can't even, I can't even put it in words. I really can't. The love of God. The love of God. being perfect? No, he's not going to let you there. You can't be righteous, so who's the solution? Christ Jesus, who came into the world, lived a sin sinless life. He went through all the things he did, was tortured, right? Had the skin ripped off, had the skin ripped right off his back. He was really saying he didn't sin once. He didn't hurt God once. No. It's not my will, Father, but I be done. That's what Christ said. That's the love of God. That's why I'm happy. God died for us. We're here to share the 
get that three minute view. We just got it at one time for all of them are all dead. Christ, you can conclude that all were dead, right? We saved by his death and then his resurrection, right? He, he paid that at his death, right? You know that, you know that it's kind of just common sense, I guess. What happens? Something dies for something else to live, right? You have to kill a cow to live, right? There's always sacrifice going on. So where are we living now? Guess what? We need to become righteous. A sacrifice had to, had to be brought about too. God himself was sacrificed. He sacrificed himself. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. There must have been shedding of blood. Now you think about it. I can pay my sin debt. But guess how I'm going to pay that sin debt? Through death. The way you of sin is death. For the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I can pay my sin debt. But guess what? I ain't coming back from it. I'm going to burn forever in the lake of fire. That's what you made the sin that has. In the lake, he ain't coming back now. But what's, what's the life of that? There's no real salvation. There's no, right? There's a payment, but there's no salvation. So a man came, and he died for you. He shed his blood, and he was raised again. Right? The man Christ Jesus, so that you can be made righteous. And if you died for yourself to make yourself, you, you didn't even make yourself righteous, but if you pay your sin debt by just dying and then going to hell, who else are you saving? Nobody. Why? Because you're not perfect. Christ was perfect. He suffered every temptation every man goes through in life, and he's still perfect. He was tortured to death. Most men can't even say that, and he still was sinless. He never cursed God. No. He didn't have the wrath of God poured down upon him. But guess what? He lived the perfect life. Christ lived the perfect life. So therefore, for him to be perfect, he has the ability to save all. Right? As, 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 as through one man, as one man, through one man, life came upon all. Too. Perfect man, Christ Jesus. All you have to do is put your trust in Christ. When you got to die on the cross for you, he's the only one who can pay your sin debt. That's the only thing you're trusting in. If Christ is the only one you're trusting in to get you to heaven, you're going to heaven. You trust in anything else plus me plus what God did, or you have anything else, any other man, any other, any other God, quote unquote? No, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh into the Father but by me. Christ is the only way. He's the only one. He's the only one who's going to get you into heaven. He's the only way you're going to get to heaven. Putting your trust in Him. You see, that's what makes it a free gift. That's the great thing about it. If I can just give it to you, if I can just give you the righteousness of God, I can throw it in every single one of your windows. I can make sure you roll it in and out, I can throw it in there, but no, I can't do it. God pondered the heart, right? Every way a man sees by his own eyes. The Lord pondered the heart. It's a heart thing. What do you do, right? With, I thank God and the mind. I said the law of God. Paul said. It's a paraphrase. Speak to that. It's a mind. It's heart. God pondered the heart. The Lord weighed the heart. So what's in your heart? The righteousness of God or your own? We don't got no righteousness. So it's either the righteousness of God or not. A Lord of filthy rags. And I have that without Christ too. So I'm not trying to make you feel like you know. Guess what? I'm a sinner too. Saved by grace. You're given the righteousness of God. I'm having a just before God. I have judgment.
revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So that basically puts every single man in that category, right? The wrath of God is revealed to all men. We'll just say that. Why? Because we've all done unrighteousness. For the invisible things of him, uh, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. So you know about God. You know God is real, whether you want to claim you're an atheist or not. And you know his judgment. You know, just like God here on earth and after death. You do something wrong, you're going to pay back for that wrong you've done. Right? You're going to pay back for it too. People call it wrong, right? We're going around, coming around. Oh, come on, we're not being instant karma. No, instant God judgment. That's what happened. Instant God judgment. The God judgment you get on the earth, you better be thankful. Very, very thankful. Why? You are judging you for the wrong you've done on the earth, you're thankful because you don't want to be judged after that. Those things. Now, as God, if you do wrong things and he pays you back what you've done on the earth, is he still going to judge you at death? Yes. Why? Because you're not righteous. You have to be found just before God. Just in the eyes of God. Righteous. Because he's a holy just God. He'll no, by no means clear the guilty. So if you're guilty, he's not going to clear you. How are you made clear of your sin? How are you made just before God? Putting your faith in him. Putting your faith in his life. Accepting the free gift of eternal life. Believe in all Christ. Believe it. That it's enough. The propitiation. It says because that, when they knew not God, they will find him not as God. Neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart. We're sorry. This world definitely does not glorify God as he's supposed to be. I'll tell you that. In the knowledge of God, they knew not God. Imagine that. That's like, I mean, goodness, that's America. America was founded on God, was it not? And God would trust. What happened to that? That's not even held up anymore. I see dumb stuff like in fun we trust. In all kinds of weird stuff. I trust in no, you're not, they're not trusting God. Nobody even holds that anymore. Men don't trust in God. That's why the liberal righteous. That's why America is falling apart. That's why God got kicked out. Right? You know, what's his name? His name's uh, the second president. You might know him, I hope you know him. Whatever his name is, he's not very good with history. The second president, he said that our constitution was made for religious people, people who trust in God. That's what he said. So what happened? When God's taken out of the situation, it falls apart. Right? If something's not upheld in the type of government, it falls apart. It all has to be upheld to hold it together. Right? A house divided cannot stand. You take one part out. It's just like, you know, an arch. An arch. You see like an arch in a doorway. You got the keystone. You take that keystone, what happens? It falls apart. God is the keystone of America. You know that. Founded on God, the Constitution. The second president said that. True religious people. The trust in God. True religious people. Better and better each day. We're learning new things. We're so much better off than we were in the 1600s. We know so much more. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Oh, we can't really prove that God exists. I can prove to you. I'm saying out here. The fact that you're still alive, right? The fact that you're even here, the fact that the earth even exists, proves God's right. The fact that that tree is growing, right? I mean, goodness. You know, why would atheists even say that? I believe there's a higher power. It's just, they're more willing than others to accept the fact that they know God is real. They just don't want to say, oh, it's God. Because then they have to accept everything else along the way, right? 
down by the long time. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not at all sauce. It's pride. He doesn't want to accept these things. But I'm good enough. God is not at all sauce. As the dog returns to his vomit, so the fool returns to his folly. That's your life in a nutshell. Returning to your folly. You do the wrong thing, you're like, man, I should have done that. You do it again next week, right? Nicely, you do the wrong thing again. That's the world that's your fault. You're a slave, if you will. Are you not? Are you subject to vanity? What does that mean? You have a job, you have to have a job every day. Just live. Just to have food on the table. Once the electric bill and everything else, all you can eat is your job, right? It's like, it's like your job, I'm not saying you're a slave, but you're bound to that job, are you not? It's the same thing in your sin. You just can't let it go, you have to go back. But the Bible says Christ Jesus, and here we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Redemption is Christ. What do you trust in Christ? The redemption in that he can pay, he can pay the price, right? Buy, buy you. Make you a purchase possession. See, that sounds kind of weird. Well, being bought out of slavery is a lot better than sticking in it. If not, amen. Christ never gave you out of that. He set you free. All right, the truth shall set you, shall set you free indeed. Even the word of truth will be preached. Right? Yeah. Give me that freedom from that bondage of the wicked things that you do. Right? You just can't. You can't turn, you, you can't leave the wicked things you do. You're always doing something wrong. You can't become good and wise. You're not God. God's the only good one. God is the only righteous one. If you're putting your trust in God, putting your faith in Him, counting His righteousness, righteousness is the only thing that you can help. You are giving the righteousness to God. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also. 